Hello everybody and welcome to Rolling Solo. This is a really special campaign playthrough uh, specifically for the Gloomhaven second reprint currently on Kickstarter as of right now. Uh, if you managed to miss it in the very first time that it ran through, you definitely need to go check it out. I'll have the link in the description below. But for our current purposes here on this channel, uh, we're gonna actually pause our regular campaign play through Gloomhaven in order to follow the Gloomhaven Into the Unknown uh, mini campaign that's kind of being put together by Isaac during the duration of the Kickstarter currently in progress. So we're going to jump right into it and we're going to create ourselves two different characters in the campaign we were playing on the channel. Uh, we're going to try some different things and we're going to follow his rules that he's laid out and kind of see where this takes us. So first off, I guess I'll just uh, start by reading this uh, this page of wonderful information to kind of give us some backstory on what we're actually running into here. So again, this is called Gloomhaven Into the Unknown. Welcome to the community-driven mini campaign for Gloomhaven reprint Kickstarter. Over the course of a month, these pages will grow to contain 10 all-new scenarios where the community dictates the story. Sound exciting? Here's how you play. This mini campaign is completely separate from the campaign that comes in the Gloomhaven box. So right off the bat, this means you can't do anything related to that campaign while playing this one. This includes road and city events, so we'll not be doing those. Donating to the temple or unlocking pretty much anything. You cannot make progress toward personal quests un while undertaking these adventures. In fact, it is highly recommended that you create brand new characters. So we've gone ahead, just so you guys are aware. And we have. We actually have the Tinker here set up and ready to go. Uh, we've gone ahead and chosen something that was worth up to 30 coins. We get the Cloak Invisibility and the Minor Stamina Potion. Uh, we have his deck ready to go. The cards are all laid out as such there. The scenario here is all laid out as it should be for a two-player solo campaign. We have all the enemies uh, in order here all the way up. And they all are at uh, scenario level two because we are playing uh, two-handed and open-handed. We have the Craigheart as our second hero. And we have an invis Cloak of Invisibility as well as a Minor Stamina Potion for him. These are my choices, of course. I could have chose anything else, but I chose those. And then his hand of cards are ready to go right there. Elemental track in the back and everything else is set up and good to go. So the only thing that I will mention in, in the next video or uh, I will likely, or even in this one, I would really like you guys to actually go ahead and give me a party name for this because as we go through this Kickstarter campaign or mini campaign that Isaac is putting together, I really want to have a name for our party. I also want to get some names for uh, the Craigheart, which is the uh, individual here. So we're using this character and the Tinkerer. And we need names for them. So I need you guys to chime in and give me some names as well as a party name so that we can kind of rip through this campaign together. So what else have we got here on the sheet? Well, it says it's recommended that you'll, and this is really related to shop. The third paragraph here is related mainly to what we can purchase. So a lot of this was already done prior to this starting recording. Uh, so just so you guys are aware, I only pick cards from 001 to 014. Uh, you're, that's what you're supposed to do. And then every three scenarios played after that, essentially a store opens up or unlocks more items to purchase. And obviously our characters can level up between scenarios. And we also need to do battle cards. But a lot of the stuff within the major game of Gloomhaven, some of it is being pulled out. Um, and that was mentioned in this document uh, at the very, very uh, beginning that some things won't be happening. So, uh, for instance, this says like road events aren't happening, donating to the temple, unlocking pretty much anything because I don't think Isaac wants anything spoiled. So what we will do is pick two battle cards per of our two heroes. So we can go ahead and we put one over here, one over here, kind of divvy them up. And then we're gonna take a look at them and see which one makes the most sense. So for the Tinker, we've got ourselves Die hard and professional. So the die hard ones is never allow your current hit point value to drop below half your maximum hit point value. Round it up during this scenario. That's I think with the amount of enemies we have on here, it's going to be a bit tough. Although he would be the guy to do it because he's got the healing uh, capabilities, so he could pull that off. But there is a lot of action going on here. I'm not really sure how easy that might be, even though everyone in this scenario hates everyone and we're all fighting against each other, including the enemies in this scenario is very, very different. We've essentially started a bar fight, but I'll read all that stuff uh, in a second. So professional here says, use your equipped items a number of times equal to or greater than your level plus two during the scenario. 
So we know right away or straight away that we can't do that because if we use both of our items that is two uses, our level is one and adding two to it, um, well that makes three and that we're shy of that anyway. So the professional one doesn't really make much sense. I just wanna make sure I'm reading that correctly. Um, use your equipped items number of times equal to or greater than yeah, that's pretty much it. So there's no possible way of actually doing that battle card. So we're just going to go ahead with the Die Hard and just hope that we can actually do that. Although it's a very difficult one to pull off. Um, and then we're going to take the a look at the two for the Craig Hart. We've got ourselves Hunter. Kill one or more elite monsters during the scenario. Well, there's a really, really easy one for us. And the second one, ooh, Aggressor. Have one or more monsters present on the map at the beginning of of every round during this scenario. Have one or more monsters present on the map at the beginning of every round during this scenario. Interesting. Okay, so we just have to be really, really aggressive. Um, I don't think that one's too hard to do either. Uh, unless I'm, I kind of want to do this one because there should always be monsters on the map. Uh, so I, let's, go with, let's go with Aggressor, I think. So we'll take the Hunter one even though that's really easy. Uh, I think we're going to go for the aggressor and try to get the two check marks. So what we're going to need essentially is we're going to need the um, we're going to, in order to get these two check marks, uh, we're going to make sure that we can't that we're not starting around. Um, well, we just have to make sure that a monster is on the board every single scenario. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to do this. Really, I'm just kind of humming and hawing because I'm kind of shocked that's actually two check marks because I think that's relatively easy unless I'm reading that wrong but we're going to go ahead and start it off. Um, the very first thing we're going to do is on top of the PDF which you can find on the Kickstarter page as well um, down in the description below I'm going to also list uh, where Isaac is going to be updating the uh, like he's basically running a, a live poll in between these scenarios so that you guys can chime in on what the next step is going to be and at the end of this scenario once we play through it, you guys will be able to vote on where you want to go next. And uh, that link will be in the description below this video. You can go in there, pop in your vote, and uh, we can kind of tally those up along with many others playing through the game. So what I'm going to do for you right now is just read through this scenario that's been created. This is again called Into the Unknown. It's called Just Another Night. The requirements, there are none, because this is our very first scenario. The goal is to kill a number of enemy Enemy, sorry, equal to three times the number of players. Okay, so we are playing uh, solo, but uh, we are playing with two uh, characters. So from what I understand, we would have to kill six. From what I'm from what I'm gathering from this, uh, even though technically um, I could probably cheat. Okay, so anyway, uh, introduction. The evening started off simply enough with you having nothing better to do but join the rest of the cast-offs of society in the Sleeping Lion. Being a mercenary can sometimes be exciting, but mostly it's just boring. That's what strong drink is for. The basic truth is that there is nothing else to do with your life. You're powerful, you can handle yourself in a fight, and you know that much. And you came to Gloomhaven looking for sporadic work guarding trade caravans and loading cargo ship ships. Sorry. So far, however, the most action you've seen has been in this rundown tavern. Pretty much every night, some disagreement between patrons turns bloody and suddenly you're not bored anymore. Turns out tonight's no different. Some inex bumps into a man's drinks and turns it into... And turns out the man isn't too friendly towards the Inux. And then you then you wouldn't know the Inux isn't too friendly toward the humans who aren't too friendly toward the Inux. I sure hope I'm pronouncing that right. Things naturally devolve from there. The next thing you know, chairs are flying across the room and no one even remembers how the fight began. It's every mercenary for themselves. And that boredom isn't going to alleviate itself. All right, so that's kind of like the, the, the text, and you can kind of see here I've also laid out a bunch of barrels and tables and stuff knocked over everywhere. Again, in the actual base game, uh, there's tokens that lay here. These are all considered obstacles in this particular uh, playthrough or, or game map. Uh, nothing here is called difficult terrain, so everything here doesn't uh, affect ranged weapons or anything like that. But obstacles are something that everyone needs to get around. The only way you can get around them, or sorry, over them, is by jumping. Um, otherwise, you have to move around them. So, the special rules for the scenario say characters must start on a starting hex adjacent to a monster. So, essentially, for now, I've got the Tinkerer here, and I've got the Krykard up here. So, they're beside monsters in both the entry points. 
Uh, and this is again based on the map here. You got two entry points at the top in white and two at the bottom. So I'm, and when you're playing with uh, two uh, or two different heroes, uh, you have a, a, a less individuals along this side of the bar area or the sleeping lion and more so heavily here. And I'm sure as you, if I was to play four handed, this whole place would just be jam packed. Um, so each monster on the board is an enemy to you and an enemy to every other monster. So no one likes each other. Bandits and Inix will share uh, monster ability cards and with all the bandit cards acting before the Inix cards in the initiative order. And all bandit archers acting before all uh, Inix archers in, in the initiative order. So, uh, so basically we're going to go ahead and when we pull cards, we got like the Inix guard card here. We have the bandit guard card here. We have a guard deck. When we pull the card from this guard deck, it's going to actually have to do with both. But based on this scenario, we're going to always play the bandit guards first and then the Enix. Same with the archers, same type of situation. They're sharing one modifier deck. The shaman in the back here actually has his own deck by himself. Uh, what else did I miss? Did I miss anything else here? No. Only character kills or character summon kills count toward the goal. The Sarah is lost if there are ever not enough enemies on the board to fulfill the goal condition. All right, so then and after that, you get some kind of conclusion text as well as some choices, which I'm not showing you until we get to the end of this particular playthrough. So this is just the quick sum up to get everything in place to kind of get the feel for this very first scenario called Just the Other Night. Um, this is gonna be again part of the Gloomhaven campaign, which is ongoing. Please check the links in the description below if you want to be uh, notified of these uh, videos as they go live um, please subscribe and then you'll be able to actually follow along not only really in this live campaign during the Kickstarter but also my own personal full-on Gloomhaven campaign uh, that I also have on this channel as well so you kind of get a two-for-one there um, so again, if you guys are enjoying it, that's great. I hope you guys will join me on this journey and we'll see where, I guess, Isaac takes us. So until the next time, keep rolling solo.